Good evening and welcome. Welcome to a special concert celebrating music at Mayo featuring Louis Lipnick and Friends. This concert is sponsored by the Mayo Clinic Dolores Jean Lavin Center for Humanities and Medicine. The program is a gift from our guest, guest artists. My name is Paul Scanlon. I'm the medical director of the Lavin Center for Humanities and Medicine. Before I introduce the program, I'd like to request that pagers and cell phones be switched to silent operation. The Mayo Clinic Dolores Jean Lavin Center for Humanities and Medicine supports Mayo Clinic's primary value, the needs of the patient come first, by integrating the arts and other expressions of human culture into the healing environment of Mayo Clinic. The center's programs, educational activities, and research into medical humanities serve patients, families, employees, learners, and the larger community, promoting the compassionate delivery of health care. Music, dance, and theatrical programs, visual arts ex exhibitions, bedside arts programs, and invited lectures all contribute to the healing environment. The center's programs are man managed by Dr. Johanna Ryan. I'd like to acknowledge our benefactor, Mr. Paul Lavins, who's joining us this evening. Uh, Mr. Lavins, welcome. His wife, Dolores, was a great supporter of the arts and music and dance, and we thank you for your support. Tonight, we're honored to present a musical ensemble with a unique blend of instruments. Louis Lipnick, principal contrabassoonist of the National Symphony Orchestra in Washington, thought his performing days were over when he first came to Mayo Clinic. However, he was fortunate to have successful surgery, preserving his ability to perform. He wanted to share his talents and give back to Mayo Clinic to show his appreciation and gratitude. He proposed the idea for tonight's concert, and it was forwarded to the Lavin Center for Humanities and Medicine. After we determined that it might be possible, we solicited participation from talented local musicians, most of whom are staff and students at Mayo Clinic. The musical selections and new compositions were inspired by the ensemble that resulted. Tonight we bring you the result of that creative process as the expression of Mr. Lipnick's appreciation and gratitude to Mayo Clinic. Mr. Lipnick serves as the principal contrabassoonist of the National Symphony Orchestra in Washington, a role he's maintained for 46 years since shortly after he received his Bachelor of Music degree from the Peabody Conservatory. His biography is included in your program, and I encourage you all to read the biographies, which are not only well-written, but inspiring in their diversity of experience. I will say that Mr. Lipnick, uh, uh, sorry, I will say of Mr. Lipnick that he's been an innovator in promoting the commissioning of important new works for his instrument. In 1970, at his suggestion, the National Symphony commissioned uh, Gunter Schaller, sorry, Gunter Schuller, to compose his concerto for contrabassoon and orchestra, the first concerto ever written for the contrabassoon. He performed the premiere of the work in 1979 under the baton of the great maestro Mstislav Rostopovich, conducting the National Symphony Orchestra. He's premiered a number of great works for his instrument with some of the world's great symphony orchestras. He's the principal North American proponent of the contraforte, a new double reed instrument which he will play tonight. Besides playing in the National Symphony and pursuing an active solo career, Mr. Lipnick has conducted seminars in contrabassoon and bassoon performance at academic institutions across the United States and at the prestigious Sibelius Academy of Music in Helsinki, Finland. Mr. Lipnick is also an internationally regarded expert in electronics and acoustics. He served as consultant to the United States Congressional Office of Technology Assessment and operates an acoustic design consulting firm. We're also thrilled tonight to welcome co composer Noelia Scalzo, visiting from Argentina. Tonight's concert features two new works by Mrs. Scalzo. A graduate of the National University of Cordoba with a degree in music composition, she's an internationally known composer, musical producer, conductor, singer, pianist, and professor of music composition. Her tango fantasy for solo contraforte and orchestra was premiered by Louis Lipnick at the 2016 International Double Reed Society Convention in Columbus, Georgia, and marked the first work ever written for solo contraforte and orchestra. We're also excited to have Maestro Jerry Lance conducting tonight. He's directed the Rochester Symphony Orchestra for over 35 years and is the president and CEO and artistic director. He's conducted all of the important orchestras in Minnesota and has traveled the world conducting in Europe, Asia, and Latin America. In the United States, he's conducted the symphonies of St. Louis, Rochester, New York, Syracuse, Santa Cruz, Huntsville, Alabama, and numerous others. The ensemble is comprised of eight other musicians, seven of whom are Mayo Clinic employees or students. Once again, I encourage you to enjoy their biographies, which are inspiring. The Mayo artists illustrate the fact that medicine can be a great day job for professional quality musicians. 
Think of how relieved their mothers must be. <laughs> Our only non-Mayo musician is Tom Hineker, who's a wonderful double reed artist, as well as the creator of some of the world's finest oboes and vocals for double reed instruments. The oboe you will hear play, played tonight by Dr. Alan Bishop is one of his creations. Mr. Lipnick will provide some introductory comments regarding the music. Please join me in welcoming Louis Lipnick and friends and enjoy the concert. Good evening. It is really an honor for me to be here. And uh, with these incredible musicians doing this great music, it's a dream that I've had ever since I came here as a patient, and now we're doing this. Uh, I wanted to say a few things about the pieces as we go along. Um, this first piece, the Beethoven Opus 16, is an interesting work. Uh, Mozart wrote a piece for the same group, four, the same four winds and piano, back in uh, 1784. Um, Not to be outdone, Beethoven said, well, I'm going to do the same thing. So he wrote his work in 1796. Interesting, though, he never wrote another work for winds like this. He wrote um, in symphonies and concertos, but not this. Whereas Mozart went ahead and did all kinds of chamber music for large and small wind groups. And in 1810, Beethoven rescored this piece, Opus 16, for piano and string trio, which is more often heard than this. That's why I wanted to play this version tonight. You may have heard the other version, but now you're going to hear the real one. Thank you. Thank you. 
the next piece is um, a piece that Noelia wrote for me this year called Argenta. And it's a, it's a group of original tangos from Argentina. We don't usually hear original tangos from Argentina here. We hear its style, a new style, a nuevo tango called piazzola in this country. But rarely do we actually hear the original Argentine tangos, which there are many, which I discovered and I went down to study tango with her and realized that I had no clue whatsoever. Um, it's, it's solo bassoon and piano. The first one is a zambo tango, which is a romantic folk dance. It's a classic tango, but it's romantic for a man and a woman, very slow. The second one is a malambo, which is a dance done by men only. The third one is Vidala, which is a northern Argentinian folk song from the mountain region, which is basically played only on original wind instruments that can play only five notes, in other words, a pentatonic scale. Now, she writes more than five notes for me, but you'll notice that the scale sounds kind of odd because it's really it's originally designed to be played with instruments that can only play five notes on them. These are very early wind instruments. The last one, is a milonga, which is a southern Argentinian folk dance. Now, they're played without interruption, but you'll sort of get the idea as we go along, so you have an idea of what you're hearing and how different they really are than what you've heard in the past. I thought I'd get a read that works.
This next work is by a, fav a famous composer, Mozart. Um, as I said before, he wrote a lot of music, chamber music for winds. And this piece is interesting. It's a divernamento, which is basically meant to play while people are having dinner, you know, pastime music, background music. Um, and he wrote several of these. I think, I think there were originally five or six in this set. And this is number two, which is probably the best known. Now there's some discussion as to what he wrote this for originally, but most musicologists say it was originally written for three basset horns, and basset horns look sort of like a funny looking bass clarinet, and they're pitched, I think, an F, uh, and Mozart used it in a lot of his, his music, including his uh, Requiem. But then it was being played by all kinds of other strange instruments, and this is the, the, the version that's played most often for oboe, clarinet, and bassoon once I get to read the work. Thank you. 
continue our program with a very interesting piece um, by French composer Francis Poulenc. The piece was composed in 1926. Francis Poulenc was a member of a group of what we call rebellious French composers. Well, actually, one was Swiss, Otto Honegger, in the 20s. Um, they sort of railed against the establishment of French composition at the time, whatever that was. And, um, his music was just very different, but at the time it wasn't that popular, but now it is very, very popular. This trio was actually dedicated to the Spanish composer in front of his Manuel de Falla. Uh, it's in three movements, and uh, it's also paired, we're not doing it tonight, with a wonderful piece for piano and five winds called a sextet, which actually shares some of the same themes. I hope you enjoy it.
Um, now I'm going to take out the big boy. This thing is called a contraforte. Now, it's a funny story behind this. Um, I'm a contrabassoonist. Contrabassoon, even today, is an ill wind and a wind blows good because it's acoustically wrong. The modern contrabassoon, even that Heckel's making now for 80,000 euros, is still based on an 1878 design from Wilhelm Heckel. Um, yes, it's a better instrument, but it's still basically the same design and has problems. It's too small a bore, it doesn't have the sound, you don't have the fundamental pitch, and when you play loudly, you hear a horrible raspberry sound. You don't want that. So, in, in the early, around 2001, a fellow named Guntram Wolf in uh, Kronach, Bavaria, who was also into acoustics, said, you know, we have to make this a, into a better instrument. And actually, I had a better instrument made by F Alan Fox in Indiana. And he still makes very good instruments, but it's still contrabassoons. So, he went to this fellow in Leipzig, Dr. Grundman, and says, well, how can we fix this thing? And Grundman says, let me tell you this. Instead of putting the Band-Aid on the disease, cure the disease. Throw it out and start over again. Huh? So this is what they did. So he says, Grundman, what should I do? So he came up with this design, and he says, that Mickey Mouse is, um, that is going to work? He says, well, acoustically it should. Well, it, the first ones I didn't think worked very well, but I played my first one in 2004, so I'm not quite ready yet. In 2010, I bought, I heard, I played another one, improved one, I said, that's it, I bought it. Took it to the orchestra, everyone loved it, saw my contrabassoon, done. To this date, I'm the only member of a major U U.S. orchestra to play on this thing. There were three others in existence, one, my original one, that I sold to a student in California, one, uh, a freelancer in St. Louis, and one, a fellow in California. They're all over Europe, all over Asia, but only one here. Um, so it's, uh, it's a totally different instrument. But so far, every conductor has come, including Eschenbach, our music director, and everyone else has said, this is a far better instrument. Why doesn't anyone play them? I said, you're asking me? Yes. So um, I've had a great deal of luck playing this instrument. I enjoy playing it. It's actually fun to play versus a contrabassoon, which is always a fight to get the darn thing to work. Um, I mean, it still makes funny noises once in a while, but any double reed instrument, as you notice, will make funny noises sometimes. Um, so the next piece we're going to play is uh, by Daniel Baldwin, who's a composer. He's actually out in uh, Nebraska. As a matter of fact, a few months ago, I premiered a new piece of his there. We recorded it, uh, Concerto for Contraforte and Strings. And this piece was written for Matthew Morris, who's a bassoon professor at Ohio University. It's called Into the Deep.
Okay, we're resetting here. Now, this last piece is, I think, absolutely amazing. Um, Noelia here, my dear friend, who I've gotten to know both as a wonderful friend and a wonderful composer, um, when I told her that I had been spending a lot of time at the Mayo Clinic, I wasn't well, and how much they helped me, she said, I want to write something for them. Okay, well, what are you going to write? I don't know. I want to write something for you and for them to dedicate to the Mayo Clinic. So, you know, I had this whole idea, you know, this harebrained idea of doing this concert here, and uh, I said, well, we need to get a bunch of people together, and who's available? Well, we ended up with this interesting group. And this is a rather unlikely group. We have a euphonium, we have a trumpet, we have a horn, we have a clarinet, we have two violins, a contraforte, and a hecophone. I don't know if you know what a hecophone is. A hecophone is this strange invention that actually made by only Willem Heckel. Still made there, although I think they're stopping to make them next, soon, next year. Uh, it was... Some keys on that front, by the way. Oh, really? They just stopped taking orders. A man died. Oh, my goodness. So the, they're not going to make any more. Well, so be it. Anyway, it's Richard Wagner asked uh, Heckel to design this because he needed an instrument between the English horn and the bassoon, and he came up with this. Wagner didn't live to see it, but Richard Strauss did. And if you listen to any of his operas, particularly uh, Salome, or you listen to the Alpine Symphony, it's in there. Anyway, of all instruments, and of course Tom here is, makes these vocals for, for English horns and makes his own oboes, and this vocal actually makes this instrument sound like a musical instrument, usually it sounds like a giant duck. But this time he's actually, or better yet, a goose. But he actually makes this thing work. Uh, so anyway, I sent this list of instruments to Noelia, and without flinching, she says, oh, I'll write something. Huh? I mean, how many composers could come up In two weeks, she came up with this piece. Doc, and she called it Dr. Tango. And it is, it is dedicated to the people. It says the doctors, doctors and nurses and everyone at the Mayo Clinic. I thought that was lovely. It's tango. But it's, again, it's original Argentinian tango. Again, I asked her a lot about this, and I'm still not up to speed, but I'm getting closer. The original, it starts with a, just a sort of tango dance, but then it turns into a malonga, but it's not a folk malonga, it's a dance malonga, which is different. I'm not quite sure why or how, but that's what she told me. Anyway, I think, I think you'll like it. Not to delay the proceedings, but I just want to give a big thank you to all the musicians who are here, nearly all of them medically involved. <laughs> Growing up in Pennsylvania, I learned early on that there were a lot of people in medicine who performed on musical instruments. There was a orchestra in Pittsburgh made up entirely of physicians, so I'm not surprised at this talent. Um, but what is wonderful is that they share this talent here and that the Mayo Clinic, through its Humanities and Medicine program, gives them the opportunity to do that. And the Humanities and Medicine program is so rich, not just with musical art, but with all sorts of other things. If you haven't seen the art all over the Mayo Clinic, you really should. It's an art museum uh, disguised as a medical facility. And I want to thank uh, Dr. Paul Scanlon and Johanna Ryan for putting together this wonderful idea and making it happen. And a special big thanks to Paul Lavins for providing the um, financial wherewithal to make this whole thing work. And a final big thanks to two very special people, Noelia Escalzo, who wrote two pieces for tonight. Very rarely do you get to hear two world premieres on one program. And to Louis Lipnick, who brought his talent and his thanks to bear and to really make a significant difference here for us in Rochester. Thanks, Lou. It's great. There are very few occasions in this world that are truly unique. This is one of them. I promise you, no composer in history has written for this combination of instruments. <laughs> a hecophone and a contraforte on one stage hardly ever happens, and uh, to have it in all this other combination, I promise you, no one else ever will write. <laughs> 
for this combination. I hope someday we can revive the piece and do it again, I hope with the same people. Here we go. Thank you. 